Hi, Mike Sarah here from Customer States. If you're searching for the highest quality additives, lubricants, or cleaners for your automotive, heavy equipment, agricultural, or industrial machinery needs, look no further than the Justice Brothers line of products. From lubing your chainsaw, performing a complete fuel system treatment and decarb service on a customer's vehicle, keeping that forklift forking and lifting, or just need a can of that famous JB80 penetrant to persuade a rusty bolt, Justice Brothers has you covered. Travis Ferris of Hit Distributing is not only Southern California's authorized Justice Brothers distributor, but also a great friend of mine. Over the years, Travis has helped me and my dealership with anything and everything we need, including all the lines of Justice Brothers products and even equipment to perform the various services we may need for our specific application. HIT stands for Honesty, Integrity, and Trust, so you know when you contact Travis, that's exactly what you'll get. That, combined with Justice Brothers supplying superior quality automotive products since the 1940s and 75 years in the racing industry, you will have absolutely everything at your disposal to get the job done. Justice Brothers is proudly made in the USA, and they have a satisfaction guarantee or your money back. Justice Brothers has the best quality products over any other competitor, and they'll gladly tell you that themselves. If you live in the Southern California area, call my man, Travis Ferris, at 805-208-7818. And if you don't, call him anyway and tell him I said thanks. And visit justicebrothers.com to learn more about their complete line of products. Justice Brothers, America's brand for quality. to another Friday. We made it. Chikorichi. This is Customer States Podcast, where we talk about everything in the automotive industry. Wait, and what we, is this? It's Customer, Customer States, States Podcast. Oh, okay. Customer States I Podcast. I wasn't sure, you know, for the other people. Customer States Podcast. Oh, okay. Where we talk about everything in the automotive industry. Mm-hmm. And we also start off every episode with one of these. Tasty What is beds. these? A crack. <gasps> of the it's can. Happening. It's happening. It's happening. You're doing it, aren't you? You're sitting in the street. Do that to <laughs> do that to me. Don't you ruin that dress? <laughs> my name is Mike Sarah, senior mass technician, shop foreman, transmission technician. And to my left is Eric Montenegro. Oh hello. It's me. What's up, bitches? Mm. Heavy line technician. And that's the only hat I wear. <laughs> <laughs> For Ford Motor Company. Just the fabulous hat. Almost. Oh, that hat, that is a hat too. Mm-hmm. I have a fabulous hat. The loud mouth in the shop, the most animated. The most fun. The diva. Um, but I own all of it, and that's fine. Oh, I can be a bitch, too. Do yeah. you? Yeah. We all can be a bitch. You're that bitch. I'm a bitch. I'm 100% <laughs> that bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, and to my left. Hi. Is oh, it's the, the read off. <laughs> is the one and only. Uh huh. Fabulously fair. Foxy yet forgiving, flawlessly flirtatious, fashionably fearless, funny and friendly, Ali Paul! Hello! Hashtags know the barrel, <laughs> god damn it! Thank you for that Hashtag wonderful Sobo. introduction. Thank you for you that prepared marvelous. For that fantastic introduction. introduction. No, you missed it. It was a cue, but it's okay. Well, <laughs> I'm Ali. I'm, uh, I do uh, warranty administration. She for will. both Volkswagen and Mazda. Administrates warranties. I do. I do my best. It's a great job. And <laughs> <laughs> Are you tell me sure how you really that? feel. Yeah, I, I was going to say. That I wasn't really very mean it. Convincing. It's the best job. <laughs> was not convincing at all. Um, no, I love it. It's fantastic. Really. And to my left. <laughs> Super convincing. Is someone else who loves his job. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Just... The boundless joy of ah. seeing all those customers all the time. There's just nothing more you want to do to spend your time that way. <laughs> it's no. Jake Rikus, you guys. We're not recording a commercial, Jake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Jake. Welcome to Customer States Podcast, where we talk about everything in the automotive industry. Oh, I wanted to be I Mike see, today. I, see, I, see. I wanted to be Mike today. I love my job. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Hold it back. Don't yeah, spew. Exactly. And all of my customers 
I just <laughs> love. Um, anyways, I'm a I'm a service advisor, glorified assistant service director, and um, IT, and um, what is it? Uh, technician uh, secretary. Secretary, right? Technician secretary, and I do other things too. But I'm tired and I can't think of them right now. So it's Friday. You don't have to think about it. I, yeah, I guess it's been nuts, man. I I really, really do not like this time of year. For the auto industry just because it's very busy and there's always rollover without there being back ordered parts and stuff like that everybody thinks that they're the most important because they left off their service right before they have to take a long trip <laughs> and the last time that they were in they were like oh you told me i needed everything and i declined it then but now i want to do it now and that's our problem or you know oh, it's been thirteen thousand miles since my last oil change, and mm. now I'm gonna drive all the way to you know Texas. I need it right now. And yeah, and I need it right now. I I really. It's my car, and I need it now. Your lack of preparation yes. does not constitute an emergency on my part. Correct. Mm. I this this time of year is just tough. Everybody's everybody's pissy, and nobody's looking forward to it. It's and true. The, Can't even get Taylor Swift tickets. The world's falling apart. Who? Yes, you, but you did. But I had to buy them off of StubHub. You still got tickets. Thank God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this time of year, I'm so-so about. I love the food and hanging out with my family and friends, but I don't like the auto industry around this time of year. Wait, you like the food? I thought we were talking about Thanksgiving. We were. I was saying around this time of year, like, oh, coming up to Thanksgiving. Oh, just people get fucking cray-cray. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ali's to the party, finally. I'm here. <laughs> I've arrived. Hashtag sell the bell, wake up. 97S88. Sorry, sorry, I didn't recall What does that, that mean, Allie? I, didn't, I don't recall. What, what, uh, <laughs> She's a fucking liar. Boo! I don't recall. So. Yes, we, we get it, honey. <laughs> Allie said she's going to trade me up for the new model. <laughs> Not a bad trade idea. him in for a new one. <laughs> so yesterday Ford dropped a new recall. And the title or, or the number of the recall is 97S88, which tells us that it's a recall from 1997 and it's a safety recall and some other things. Number 88. End. Yeah, which is a, a number, I guess. Yeah. Um, numbers. Uh, anyway, so this is a supplement to a recall that was issued in 1997 oh wow better late than ever so if uh, i have pulled because this just <sighs> happened yesterday i've had have not had time to research it so i've pulled up a, a few bulletin is that points the cruise control one nope okay. no that's 09 s 08 or something like that eat my shorts um but so this one is it's all all 1994 to 96 model year mustang and 1995 to 96 model year Windstar vehicles with sheet molded compound hoods built prior to 123195 95 hood separation. Hoods but hood separation after. <laughs> so, Jesus. so the brief 25 years later, yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. The brief overview of this is that at some point in 1997, this issue, uh, this recall was issued. And it's possible that maybe similar to some door latch recalls that the bonding and adhesion didn't really hold well enough under certain circumstances. So they have this whole procedure where you take a one inch putty knife and see if the seam is good. And if it's not, then you order a new hood and bond it. Yes. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you heard me correctly. You heard me correctly. A new one? A new hood. On a 25 year old car that the paint is probably peeling and yeah. no hair coat on it. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. And Continue. Adhere new stuff to it. I mean, I, I again, I. Talk about me, avoiding a lawsuit. Correct me when I'm wrong, but there's. You're wrong. This is. Well, you me. haven't you haven't read this through yet. <laughs> I, I have it right in front of me. I could read the whole thing all the way through. It's insane. It's asinine. For Jeebus. legal reasons, you probably shouldn't. So, so the biggest issue is is that they say that if the vehicle has had a replacement hood or has been in a front end collision, then it is up to the customer to authorize the repair. Oh, which okay. now means you have a safety recall barring your vehicle from being registered again if you don't pay to have your things replaced because the vehicle was in an accident and does not have the stock components on it anymore. 
I, it, so this this whole thing again, it just wait. Is it, off- there's not a way to close it if the customer declines the additional repairs? Like, the, well, cause in, let's in, look because I have a full thing right here. Just give me one. Is it second. is it a pitif? A pitif? <laughs> You're so stupid. No, it's a jipping. <laughs> <laughs> so, so right here, I see that uh, inspect for hood separation and uh, collision damage slash modifications. Damage slash modifications present requires hood replacement by customer. FSA remains open. Oh. Yeah. So. Well, why so are like, they doing that? How many well, you... also, like, how many vehicles are affected? Oh, she, so I, she I, beat I, me to it. I, I spoke to Sam, our warranty administrator, right as this dropped, and I said, "You have to check this out." And she's like, "Ha ha ha! I'm not looking up a, a, a field service action from Hi, 1997." Sam. And I said, "You don't understand. This is supplement number two. It released, you know, yesterday. You have to look at this." So, um, yeah, she says, "Oh my." god <laughs> i'm like <laughs> yeah it that's insane it's it's insane i mean yes ford is very good at standing behind their product and things like that but really a 25 year old vehicle that's ridiculous i'm sorry and there's, the, there's a line you have to draw and, the, and but at more to jake's point how many of those do you see every day i mean sure oh, there's, a, there, there's a few there's a few <laughs> I, thought, I thought you had said that how many of those are out on the road i did say that oh you did you, you said oh. that's to Jake's point. Oh my goodness, my my goodness! I'm so sorry. <laughs> you guys look so similar. Yeah, I told you you were wrong, so we're correcting you. <laughs> Our voices thank are you. very similar too. Is that because I've got a nice pair <clears throat> of tits? <laughs> no, thank. I think that was below a the waist. Then. <laughs> below the waist. But mm. yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand what? why Ford stands behind their stuff. My bitties. But I mean, that's a little excessive, you know. Yeah. Marbles. Most, you know, if if, if I try Very to get smuggling. any other parts for those cars, Ford says they're obsolete, but yet we're doing an open recall for these vehicles. And more more to the point, again, is that if the vehicle's been in an accident or had modifications to the hood, like any Mustang from that era or, you know, any Windstar or whatever that's still around, it's going to have been in an accident. Now the customer has to pay for this thing or they Not can't get it registered. Not every car has been in an accident. I guess there's maybe that one or two cherry Wind stars out there, minivans, but you know, stars. I just fucking can't. Just, <laughs> I just can't. Yeah, but the, the, like the number on the road on those is so mm-hmm. minute. I can't wait. Like, I uh, if I see one, I'm gonna see if it has a shiny new hood and a crap ass paint job on the rest of the car. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing too. You got to put a new hood on it. What are you gonna? You, you know, you're supposed to blend to the fenders and the. Oh doors my gosh! So you just touches. take like a belt sander to it to make it match yeah. all the terrible paint on the rest of the they car. They call it patina. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hashtag soda belt. <laughs> But oh yeah, gosh. I mean that's just like some of the craziness that we deal with at the Fjord mm-hmm. dealership. I just Beard. Seems, Beard. seems insane to me. Beard. Beard. So an interesting thing happened to me oh. today as I was leaving Excuse the me. dealership. Is that that the second story? You you don't get to tell this. That one well, thing. I just want. I'm just gonna say like the beginning you don't and then ninety seven You don't get to, you don't get to say this, Ali. No. <laughs> so no. Alex no. stops me. Customer no. podcast. No. And no. <laughs> You're fine. Go ahead, Allie. Okay, you do I have your permission? Steal my oh, thunder. thank you. <laughs> thunder stealer. Um, I'm walking. <clears throat> my mom's about to call. Like, my mom's calling me. My phone's ringing in my little earbud. It's ringing. And Alex is like, hey. Hey, can you can you come over here? Uh, we want you. We want to see if this is warranty. And they're very excited. And I'm like, well, I can judge by the way you are acting that that's not, not warranty. I don't even need to look at it. It's not warranty. <laughs> Before yeah, I even seriously. saw. And then as I walked up to the vehicle, I saw the following. So I just sent the group two photos so that you can play along with this. The goop. Let me know when you guys get to look at these two. Mm-hmm. Oh, apparently my phone's not on silent. <gasps> well, <laughs> does the customer take their own shit apart? What the fuck? Okay, I don't know so what happened here. This was... And why is the turbo still attached to the cat? Uh-huh, I know. Uh, there's so many questions to <laughs> oh ask. Oh my god, I just saw the second picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is... To start it off, <laughs> we got a... Yeah, guys, we... Does it look like there's something missing? <laughs> we we received a phone call, and the new kid that sits next to me, Kyle, picks up the phone, 
has a conversation with the guy he says oh you know my cx9 it leaking coolant runnability issues this that and the other thing mm -hmm. it's at another shop right now i can't stop you, staring at this mess you know they they haven't touched anything yet but i don't want to drive it so can i have it towed over and you guys can take a look at it because there's a tsb for this concern the fuck and he's like yeah you, you can have it towed over and we'll fit it in the best that we can and it showed up today and um the car comes off of the tow truck and we ask the guy, you know, is it drivable? And he's like, looks at us like, no. What are you fucking stupid? Of course it's not drivable. And we're kind of like taken aback by it. And we're like, okay, okay, dude, it's just a question. And you know, he rolls it off the back of the truck and, you know, uh, with the momentum, he just uses it and throws it into a parking spot and he leaves. And uh, we walk up to it and we <laughs> pop the hood. And we're like, oh, <laughs> I see. There's some and, things. And what did you see? At, uh, wrong. That's what we saw. <laughs> and we open it up and we're like, there's a few things missing from the engine compartment. And then we go to the back and there's the cat and the turbo and a bunch of other parts just chilling in the back. They've laid plastic everywhere. Well, that was considerate. And of their own vehicle. So besides the fact of, uh, Mike, the food is at the front door. If you went to grab it, we ordered food. So plastic is laid down. All the parts are on top. There's oil everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, grease everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we decide to kind of look around in the car because the guy said he was going to leave us paperwork from the previous repair shop that apparently had already started tearing it down, but referenced this TSB and said, oh, you should probably take it over. It's probably covered under warranty. So we're looking through the repair order and all this stuff, still Hold taking on. apart. Hold on. Uh -huh. People need to understand. Yes, please preach. TSBs do not dictate under any condition mm -hmm. warranty coverage. Mm -hmm. hey, my they sister. never dictate warranty coverage. You still have to see yep. if the causal part is covered under whether it be powertrain, emissions, whatever the fuck it is, a TSB does not dictate warranty coverage. Yes. Period. End of discussion. There's no black and white there. Yes. That was for you, Allie. I, I loved it. Yes. <laughs> so we go. I was feeling it. <laughs> so we go through the paperwork because, you know, the guy goes, oh, yeah, it should still be covered under the powertrain. No big deal. Everything's completely fine. Besides the fact that it shows up in, in pieces. So we're already, as soon as this thing lands, it's like, all right, get it the fuck out of here. <laughs> Is we find the paperwork and the car has 120,000 miles. Okay, so it's way out of fucking warranty. Yeah. Yeah. But he's like, well, it's got powertrain. Mm -hmm. it, um, it did 60,000 miles ago. 60,000 miles ago, yes. yeah. 60,000 miles ago. So now Kyle gets the joy of calling this Wait, guy. Wait, why wasn't that figured out before they towed the car to the shop? Lack you of heard, communication. You heard Sorry, it. I did hear the name. Okay. No, the, no. You heard who? I, no, I, you, I don't want to talk shit I, I'm about not, anybody. I, I'm not. I said you heard who took the phone call. He's new. He's learning. Correct. It's not his fault. It's a hard lesson. Anyways, moving on. So he now gets to call the customer. We love you, Kyle. And tell them, come pick up your pile of shit. Unless you're going to pay for this. Yeah, exactly. We'll get, you know, we'll get you an estimate. I have absolutely no problem with that. But by no means is it covered under warranty. And it's well, even if the car was in one piece, it's still well, well, well out of the, you know, zone for assistance yeah where mazda would step in and go oh okay yeah that's completely fine and that's out by forty thousand miles well, wow they only come well, up to 80 i did hear you say that there's a cat involved but that's no. not the causal part no that's not but it's just the cat was still attached to the oh, turbo okay okay yeah. okay okay yeah it was off the vehicle yep so that was that bit of fun for the warranty trunk engine how did how did that Warranty conversation trunk. go? And did the customer? We haven't out? called the customer yet. Uh, <laughs> well, we need an update well, next week. Yeah, I'd right. love to be we a will. fly on the wall for that conversation. Well, and then the <laughs> and then the other thing is besides the guy being kind of sketchy is when he called in and told Kyle, oh, I called Ma Mazda's roadside assistance and they're taking it in because it's going to be covered. You know. It'll be a warranty concern. It does not come in on a flatbed Christ. truck or a truck that's got a local name of one of the tow companies out here that they, you know, outsource to. It is literally a beat to crap, 
Dodge Dually with just a <laughs> tow behind flat trailer driven by some dude in a reflective vest. Yeah. And, yeah, and we're all like, no, this is no. So, Do anyways, have a reflective vest does indicate you're paying that he's for, serious. Mm -hmm. So, your two toes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not the, the one to the dealership and the one out. Correct. Yeah. So, that'll be fun. I will, I will update next week. I we'll can. also post those photos. I think he'll probably just end up taking it back to the shop to have him complete the repair because he was doing it anyways. Yep. They just tried to get it covered by Correct. the Correct. But like, that was a whole lot of bullshit that could have been avoided mm -hmm. by asking questions on the phone. And also by shop, we mean like his friends, like of a friend that's oh, his, doing it, right? Out garage. of his like, garage. Yeah, yeah. Probably. For sure in a like a house garage, like not a, a shop garage. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. I'm not Just. even talking about like the ones that are still like in the chevrons or whatever. No, no, no. Like Take it back to garage. the body shop. Take it to the body shop. So I'll let you lick the lollipop. <clears throat> so we didn't get to touch on this last week, but last week is when. <laughs> touch. Um. I found I all of this out it. is that um, so on our uh, property, we have a body shop area. Used and, to. Well, ever since uh, ever, ever since, since ever, yeah. it's always ever been since, yeah. the body shop area. Let the record state that Eric is caressing his body for the body shop. Oh. 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 We can hear it. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the rubbings. Um, so. We, we've always been talking for years about kicking the body shop out and reclaiming that area for like actual shop space that technicians can work in and not body shop technicians and how much more profitable it could be. So through a series of events, we were actually able to do just that. And we are having um, five new lifts installed in that area. So the body shop leaves on um, the 2nd of uh, December. Mm. And on the 5th of December, the spray booths and all their stuff gets removed. Wow. And on the 12th of December, we start cutting concrete and pouring pads for new lifts. On the fourth day of Christmas, my so, love gave yeah. to me. <laughs> by, by Christmas, I'll have concrete curing and... Uh... <laughs> Some concrete curing. And Aren't I a good singer, you guys? It's mm. great. Mm. Sorry, you should cut that out. <laughs> I regret singing to the masses. We're not cutting out shit. But I mean, it's a, it's a super profitable space for us, not to mention the fact that we're cutting down on traffic in the dealership by having body shop people coming in and out with cars and delivery stuff and people coming by to look at things and um, all the parking spots that they take up. And I mean, it's nothing personal against the body shop, but I mean, this is a Ford dealership, not a body shop. So like, let's make the Ford dealership work on Ford cars, not body shop stuff. Yeah. So uh, I'm very excited about well, was that. Was it profitable at one time, like where you guys didn't have to send the the cars out to the body shop? Like, was it convenient? So like eight years ago, <laughs> sorry, eight years ago when it was still like relatively associated with our dealership, like closely associated with our dealership, all of our lot damage and stuff got taken care of for free. And they were allowed to do stuff. And up until was this point. Was it unapplied labor? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Uh, that's a, that's a sensitive you. subject. Stuff. That was hilarious. I... Hilarious. But, you know, uh, apparently. That, I do that declare. Deal, that deal I still. Do <laughs> apparently that deal still occurs with this body shop but we don't really have any lot damage and if we do oh my it's what's very that few, like it's very few what and far is between. that like hello we have hey once five... we got rid of the liability our lot damage went down almost 100 percent. wrong <laughs> we have three oak tre two three technically of the far lot oak trees on our property that's that insurance cost, uh, yeah that's insurance that's a little different we don't claim everything through insurance do you know what our deductible would be mm. no we do a lot of, we absorb a lot of lot damage from well, acorn to, dents and whatnot. You have to figure out Sponge. what's more cost effective. But, so, I mean, no matter what, the body shop was renting that area. And when you do the math calculations <laughs> on putting technicians in that area, we can produce way more money from that area when the, than what they are willing to pay for it. So I did research. I had uh, two or three companies come out, uh, three companies come out and give us estimates for installing new lifts. Um, I had a company come out and give us estimates for removing the spray booths and all the, the body shop equipment. Spray I booth. had the electrician come out and give us estimates for running all new power for the new lifts. I mean, I, I've, I did everything. And then once we got authorization for all that stuff, 
I was able to then finally schedule everything. So it's like this week is this done, this week is this done, this week is this done. So it's been a really interesting process, but honestly, it just feels like a personal a personal win. It first started when we took over the body shop uh, office. Remember that, Eric? When we mm -hmm. moved the uh, the all the when tire we moved onto machines. the roof. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? We moved onto the roof. Oh. <laughs> well, he's talking about the storage area on top of the body shop, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but um, I to install a ladder and everything. Really? Yeah. So, so on top of the body shop office, which is where we, uh, I knocked, I personally demoed that office, and then. Um, had all the tire machines moved over into the office. So like that way, that's our tire machine changing room, which freed up a bunch of space in the shop. But anyway, on top of the office in that area was a space full of old body shop parts and mixing things and all manuals and like all sorts of stuff. So gutted lunch that lunch break room, gutted that gutted that whole area and then was able to um, use that for uh, tool storage and stuff like that. You know, old tools that we don't necessarily need all the time, but Anyway, regardless, I mean, we're just freeing up a ton of space in the shop, and it just feels really good to finally be able to um, get the shop back to a service area and not a body shop as well. Boo! Yeah, let the record say Allie just struck my nipple. Struck. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's out there. of tension now. It is. It's out of tension. And I'm then the, if that, that slapping you noise your... you heard was him <laughs> slapping my hand away the first time. I need you to pump your brakes, bitch. I'm actually going to save <laughs> but that. But what if they break? I'm going to save that story for after <laughs> the break. Mike, what's the barbecue, damn it? Giggity. Well, um, so uh, Travis Ferris of Hit, Hit Distributing, Distributing, supplying Justice, Justice Brothers, Brothers products. products. Uh, actually threw our dealership a barbecue. Why Travis, he... get at me, bro. Why I want a barbecue. I want a barbecue, Travis. Well, no, if, I if, asked you first. Don't... He likes me more. Oh. If you if you used Travis's products, Well, if he would stop by and maybe... I used his product. He has stopped by. To say hi. Well, you can introduce him to your service manager and owner and stuff like that. And you I would love to. Parts manager. Parts manager. Who is the service manager? Everyone. Mm -hmm. He should meet everyone. Um, but Come anyway, see me, Travis. Travis, who's a, a very fantastic guy, threw us a amazing employee uh, appreciation barbecue. He does that every year. Yes. This is nothing new. It's nothing but it's new, exciting. but I want to acknowledge it. So he, exciting. Oh my God, Travis, thank you so much. We really appreciate is that, you. Wait, do you guys Sticking hear that? Sticking to product. What? Sticking I don't to, hear it. What is it? Is that jealousy I hear? Oh. Uh, no, I've had it before. There's nothing oh. to be jealous of. Oh, but you, not this year. Hey, jealousy. That's, okay. That's a. I was just saying about all you can eat sushi. Is we had the Korean barbecue flowers? this week. Oh, where'd you go? We went to um, Top Chef. Never been. Oh, it's I've heard you talk about it before. Delicious. Okay, but this is not the Top Chef podcast. It is not. No. It should be, though, because some Korean barbecue, I could get down on some bulgogi. Bulgogi, baby. <laughs> All the bulgogi and Korean pancakes. I, I just, no, I just wanted to, anything. again, thank Travis for not only his stellar uh, customer service and products, but so also stellar. for, you know, giving all the technicians and the parts guys and everybody that, Ooh. service advisors, everybody that, what you know, you, appreciation. What benefits you from the products. What? What did you have? It was well, barbecue. Well, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can put on oh. a grill. I, I, <laughs> I personally. Are we just doing like. Hamburgers and hamburgers. Hamburgers. No, I, I personally had a, a piece of tri tip and a piece of chicken. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now good. all the Very stops. Good. Thank you, Travis. Yeah. Travis. That was really nice of you. I want food. With all the fixins. I want food. Mm, what so, are we doing? We doing coleslaw? Are we doing macaroni salad? Coleslaw is garbage. No. I, I disagree. There is a way to do coleslaw right. I like it when they have like the red cabbage and the peanuts. Ooh, I like that. Where's that? Where do we go to get that good uh, coleslaw from? Is that uh, Wood Ranch or the other one? It's, it's Wood, Wood Ranch. Wood Ranch is good. Wood Ranch coleslaw, I do enjoy actually. So you know. it's back on. It, it's it has been a while since we've had a uh, a barbecue or anything like that at work. It's I'm sure it's right around the corner. We've got the Christmas party that'll be coming up. Sooner Ooh, than later. We're going to get the taco truck, you guys. Mm. Oh, are they going to do the taco truck again? I just assume. That's it's good shit. It's been the past, like, six years it's of the taco truck. It's really good food. It's owned by a little tiny Hispanic family, and, you know, Grandma and makes make all the tortillas. Make these, like, little open face, like, quesadilla 
things. Quesadillas. Oh my gosh. Quesadillas. With some spicy chicken. They all open faced quesadilla. Yeah, it's like it's not quite a. Uh, what are those ones? Tostada. The, it's not quite a tostada. Tostada. A toastata with some frijoles. A toastata with some frijoles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they also do these like fire roasted halved jalapenos stuffed with like cheese Chez. and like a little bit of meat. No, it's so good. I it's mean, really good. Have you, so do you guys do the um, stuffed bell peppers? Have you guys ever had that? I've, I've, I've not, had it. I've had I stuff, really like it. I've had stuffed bell peppers. I don't like bell peppers. You don't like bell peppers? I not love really. a bell pepper. Either every every color tastes a little bit different. Yes, I it agree. does. Yeah, so, I the mean, orange is the sweetest. Orange is very sweet. I prefer the greens. Orange is sweet. I don't Trust like me. bell peppers. <laughs> Mm. Thank Just you. FYI. Thank you. I'm right there with you, babe. Mm, yeah. Maybe if you had it stuffed with the right stuff. <sighs> well, with we're ta- not talking about my ass. We're talking about bell peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like bell peppers. Oh, my God. I, oh. I, I will eat them if they're, like, sautéed, but that's about it. Like in a fajita? Yeah. I don't fajita. know if you guys remember my... Um, I don't. Alternate transportation issues, how you need all of that special, like... Uh, authorization if it's over 10 days and all that kind of stuff yes, we yes. Had many many problems with it in the past many moons we have gotten over many of our extended parts issues mm. that would cause this your your fuel pumps on the id4s <sighs> <laughs> oh i do have an id4 story but that's for another day why not, not after the break Maybe for after the break. But anyways, I finally thought we got this issue taken care of. I two weeks ago asked and continued to follow up since those two weeks with my service manager in Volkswagen about, hey, do we have anything that needs special authorization? No, 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 no. Um, no, no, I just no. happened to go no, through no, everything no, today no. just to, I had a little bit of downtime. I wanted to follow up on it. And I found one that... uh Came in on October 3rd that no one told me about. Mm. Oh. I thought we were over this, you guys. I'm disappointed. But you know who I'm not disappointed in? Our sponsors. Our sponsors. I love our sponsors. We have the best sponsors. We do. Like Travis, obviously. Um, Nick. Obviously. Lowry from Matco Tools, supplying us with Matco Tool products. And, and Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Stealing go. my thunder, bitch. No, I joined in. The fuck you did. We'd also Move like on. to think, okay, we will. We'd Ray also meow. like to thank Ray Moon. Thank you. From El Ranchito Taco Shop and in Lake Elsinore. With his creamy guac, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get that reference. Oh my gosh. Tell us what you think. We had a lot of fun recording that. Did we miss anybody? Um, yes. Dale. We also want to thank Dale. We want to thank um, Mr. Bruce. Norman Glacier. Bruce, Bruce Bain. Bain. We also want to thank Norman Glacier, Stubbico Metalworks. And we also want to thank Dale Follett from Twisted Builds. We do want to thank Dale. We'll be right back. Hmm. What the fuck was that? I said Cole Dale. Just farted. Oh, did she really? Yeah. Oh my god, I want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I do. I want to hear a dog fart. I'm smell it right now. <laughs> there will forever <laughs> be a dog fart on the podcast. Oh my god, her, I I cannot wait to hear. Her creeping up. She's a, like strong. Oh my god. I didn't hear I it. That was- Something smells delicious in here. Yeah, it does. I'm hungry. Jake, are you eating El Ranchito Taco Shop? Mm-hmm. That looks amazing. What did you order? <coughs> Tacos. Um, what? <coughs> Guac. Jake, are you choking? Get out of my way, Michael. He needs a Heimlich. Oh my god, I cannot believe this is happening again. Jake, you know you're allergic to avocado. One generic allergy medication later. Are you okay? <sighs> yeah. Almost dying is so worth it to have some El Ranchito creamy guac. <laughs> Thanks, Eric, for trying to save me, even though I wasn't joking. I know. I just wanted to get you from behind. <laughs> well, I guess this is a good time to tell everybody that if you're ever in the Inland Empire and are craving some great Mexican food, visit El Ranchito Taco Shop in Lake Elsinore. <laughs> Seriously, I follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Ranchito Elsinore. El Ranchito Taco Shop. More than just great Mexican food. <laughs> What the fuck was 
that. What? You call it harmonizing. I made it ribbed for your pleasure. Oh, jeez. I don't know who those are for. It's not my pleasure. It's for me. Thank you. And his bussy. No, no. <laughs> We're going to have to start this over. You can't. I don't like that word. Mm, too bad. Sorry. It's there. Uh, Where are we? Who are we? We're going to we drown doing? out that whole thought. No, we're not even... We're just going to drown it out with one of these. <sighs> Thank you so much for listening to those wonderful messages. What's Do you wrong? hear anything different? Did you get a double cap? No cap. Oh, I got... Oh, shit. Oh, the cap. Oh, I told you. Nice no cap. <laughs> I remember opening my first beer. <laughs> get it. No cap. I got it. Okay. It's not a cab technically, but tab, but it's okay. It's okay. Thanks for raining on my parade, bitch. Hey, I'm here for you. Everything you're doing is bad. Mm-hmm. I want you to know this. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. The you are the best. ones who fed us today. The sweet, and sweet, the, succulent. Keep the lights on. Nectars of Popeyes. My titties. Oh. oh. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my God. Your titties make nectars. <laughs> <laughs> They're like flowers. That's called bilk. Oh. oh my god. This is unacceptable. Oh, this <laughs> is fucked here. Nothing is fucked. I'm kind of here for it. Oh my god. That really broke my brain. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This bitch is reaching now so fucking far. Thank you, Ali. Can you hit the brakes? <laughs> here we go again. Pump your brakes. Pump she your thinks she's brakes. Mrs. Incredible. All stretchy and shit. With how far she likes to reach. I prefer no capes. Edna mode. Edna mode. I'm wearing an Edna mode shirt. It's very nice. You guys. Okay, so. I get it from Disneyland. Oh boy. So. <laughs> when you go fishing. Go when you go fishing. <laughs> so when your brakes break. <laughs> as they're supposed to. So you but, get but nothing. Like brakes break break. Like when they break. don't work anymore? Yes. When Did they're broken. Break? Well, yes, we're, when your Which brakes... Which is the ta- past tense of breaking. Yes. Brakes are broken. You're when broken. your brakes are broken. they Your brakes don't break because they're broken. Uh, okay, oh. I'm okay. there. Yeah, I, we can't can't break. Break. I can't argue anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Broken. So, had a customer uh, show up with her sister's car and Jeez. she starts... This is already starting yeah. off on the wrong thing. Yes, it is. So, she comes in and she goes, well, I'm dropping this off for my sister because I'm tired of her <laughs> neglecting her car. Her brakes are broken. So I'm like, okay. And no, actually. Mm. And she goes, I'm, you know, it'll probably need tires and a few other things. And I'm like, roughly, do you think how long has been the last time it's, you know, oil change seen any form of shop? And she goes, to be completely honest, it could have been two years for all I know. Probably never. Yeah, that was my thought. And I'm all like, okay. So write it up. Super nice lady. Oil needs to be changed. Yeah, go here. I, I was told by the salesman that this has the lifetime oil in it, <laughs> and it never needs to be changed. <laughs> How uh, accurate is that? It's super accurate. That's mm. why it's funny and sad. <laughs> so my uh, my tech does the you know inspection, all that good happy stuff. Does the oil change, and the oil's pretty bad. I mean. Not like sludge black, but borderline, but pretty damn close, like almost a Vanta black. And, um, a what black? Vanta black, it's the darkest oh, it's black the in the world. It's yeah, the black, new like color paint. black that yeah. they came out with. It's like only 0.2% of light pierces it, so you can take like a laser pointer and run it over and it disappears. What did, you call, cool. what did you call it earlier? Like purple gusher or something? Like no, that? No, <laughs> no, no, no. We were talking about candy. Moving, moving on. Moving forward. <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> so we do the full circle inspection. It needs tires. It needs rear brakes. It needs a serpentine belt tensioner. It's rattling like a motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> it needs filters, all types of stuff. So I send the customer the quote and they buy everything. Oh, shit. But the tires. And the only reason okay. is the sister goes, I can get I can a better... Get them cheaper t- or somewhere. If- I can get them cheaper at I'm Costco. I'm Costco. like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard this shit a thousand times. Oh, my God. So I'm like, that's absolutely fine. So my tech does everything. It also has that fuel pump recall that we've been dealing with. So do the 94. fuel... Huh? It's a 94 then. <laughs> <laughs> so much fuel to pump in those. So we do the recall. My tech starts doing everything else. And the last part of it, he decides to do the rear brakes. 
So with the Mazdas and plenty of other cars, you have to put it into maintenance mode if it has an electronic parking brake, just so that you don't mess up, you know, the electronic parking brake, the calipers, <laughs> the whole you gotta, thing. You got to put it in maintenance mode for the electronic parking brake so you don't mess up the electronic yes. parking brake. Right. Yes. Cut the mic. No. Go on, Jacob. Okay. We're trying to fix Ali's mic. And my tech throws it in maintenance mode. Everything's fine. He does the brake job and he tries to take it out of maintenance mode. Mm. And the electronic parking brake or the piston inside of the caliper, excuse me, sits there and just spins. You hear it and not catch. Wonderful. Hmm. So we're. Is it broken? So even my tech, who he's been doing it for 30 plus years. He kind of, he does this thing where it's like, if I stick my head out or if he like sticks his head into the dispatch office and he can see my desk, he kind of does a, and I'm like, a motion. fuck. A and it's like, hand it's, motion. it's, you know exactly it's that, yeah, it a come, a come hither it, motion. it's, it's yeah. that motion. And it's like, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. So I walk out there and he starts it off with, I've never seen this before. And I'm like, yay. It's like, <laughs> we're, mm, yeah. I love when a conversation <laughs> yeah, exactly. starts off like that. It's like, who starts a conversation like this? Did like, you? just sat I down. a few conversations like that. Is your brain, like, wired a little differently <laughs> now when you hear stuff? You're like, ooh, I get to talk about this on the podcast. <laughs> yes. Seriously, yes. yes. It happens all the goddamn time. For the podcast. I mean, that's a very hilarious catchphrase. I bust out my phone. I'm like, I'm putting this in my neck. <laughs> <laughs> right, Tom? Me. So he he explains it to me it where is. after he tries taking it out of maintenance mode, the car throws two codes, one for the left electronic parking brake, one for the right, and he says, when I try and take it out, you can just hear the motor spinning. They're not catching and re-engaging. And he goes, I, he's like, I did everything the same. He's like, there's no difference. He's like, the car is stuck in maintenance mode. He's like, it's not because I didn't put it in and I shot the caliper pistons, anything like that. I'm like, okay. And usually when stuff like that happens, usually techs are... If Incompetent? It, no, no. <laughs> if, if it is due to customer negligence, they, of course, will be like, okay, it's going to be X amount more time to fix it, which is fair. But how I knew that the either tech felt that he might have messed something up or truly it is out of the customer's hands of what happened. He actually called tech line hmm. and he goes, this is what happened. I did everything to the book and this customer is buying a bunch of work. This is not fair. And tech line goes, yeah, we've been seeing a lot of this recently. Oh, I see a future service action. And, and I'm sitting there listening to my tech on the phone and he's got it on speaker. And, uh, and he asks, he's like, well, how much is you, or, you know, what do you mean by you're seeing more of this? And he's like, well, in the past, probably month, we've probably gotten a couple hundred calls. Jesus. So it's for whatever reason, you're throwing the cars into maintenance mode for the rear brakes and everything just takes a shit. Hmm. And the, he's like, we do not know why it's happening. So other people are neglecting their cars too, but they don't think it's that. They don't think they it's do, related. To they that. don't think it's anything. Interesting. Because TechLine immediately went, we have put notes in for this case. You tell the service manager to get a hold of the D DSM. Tell them to reference District this case. Service manager. And we will cover this as a goodwill gesture. Hmm. Nice. And what, to replace the calipers? To replace both calipers and both EPBs. Electric parking brakes. I would think that they would come together. Uh, uh oh. They do not. Electronic. Huh. They do not. Hmm. Everything is separate with I it. I would have thought they came together too. Mm -mm. They do not. They I mean, it's. It, damn it, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so we. Uh, <laughs> Which hashtag <laughs> sell the bell is available at customerstatespodcast.com. Ding, ding. Um, so my tech, uh, what? <clears throat> what's there? there? My microphone keeps moving slightly and I'm trying to figure out why. And it's because you're touching this and making it move <laughs> slightly each time. But last time it moved, your foot wasn't there. And anyways, I've been trying. It's my own personal mystery. I've been trying to solve. That's fair. First world problem. Yes. So my I thought George Costanza was Oh my god <laughs> was haunted. Get out. Father of God. 
believe right now. Make like a tree. And leave. And leave. And leave. Yep. You should make like a banana. So my tech got uh, lit. Oh. <laughs> So my tech does the repair, Michael, is and I call, <laughs> and I call the customer, and I'm like, "Hey, your car's ready," and I don't tell her beforehand. I wait until she gets to the office to pick up the car. <laughs> You're fucked, which is the best time. <laughs> yes, it is. It is the best time because they're there in front of you, about to pick up the car and pay. And I tell her, I'm like, "Look, what I'm about to tell you is there's nothing to cause alarm. Everything is fixed." And she kind of gets a look on her face that I was expecting, like, "Oh fuck." But and I go when we were replacing your rear brakes, your calipers and your electronic parking brake motors decided to, in less words, crap out. And she goes, "Is it because my sister treated her car like shit?" Yeah. <laughs> I would have thought the same thing. And I'm all like, "We can't prove that." <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, to be to fair, be fair. Well, you, did, to be fair. you did that on purpose. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Nope. Well, late late to the party. Late to the party. And uh, I'm like, no, we can't really prove that. But you, instead of just new rear brake pads and rotors, you now have rear calipers and brand new motors. So you stock that <clears throat> shit? What? You stock those? Yes. What the fuck? Because a lot of people go and have their brakes done elsewhere when they decline. By Travis their... at you know, <clears throat> X, X brake spot. <laughs> <laughs> they, because they decline the brake job, they take it somewhere else, they don't put it into maintenance mode, and they sh destroy the calipers. Yeah. So people call you for those parts all the time. All the or time. Or not you specifically. But yeah, but they thanks. either come in and they go, I don't know what happened. My brakes are dragging. The emergency brake light's on. It, it just isn't going anywhere. And we go, okay, that'll be $2,400. No. Mm -hmm. When you could have just done 550 Would have been done. But no. But no. But no. Oh, but so anyways, of that she, she went on her merry way. She was very happy. <laughs> she walked out with a warranty covering <clears throat> $1,300 worth of repairs. And now those parts are warrantied for... 12, 12? They are not. Yeah. They are not. If the customer does not pay anything during a goodwill You're gesture. Right. No. The customer no. has to pay out of pocket. Correct. Customer has to pay. The customer it, has to pay out of pocket. They that's, do. No. For Ford, yeah. you have a, it, it's different if, if, if the, if, uh, Warranty pays for it, then it's only 12 12. 12, 12 if right. the customer pays anything out of pocket, then you get the much better extended warranty, but it's right. still 12 12 coverage. Gotcha. So yes, that's... under warranty. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, if we do any kind of goodwill, if the customer doesn't participate, it's nothing. this is why this is a very good ploy for Mazda to always push you to part have the customer participate because if they participate one penny, they get. A 12-12 warranty. Or they if, have to participate. Or if Mazda covers it 100%, it's nothing. It's you walk, nothing. You pay for and it and you sign. you get nothing. Very nice. Thank it you. Felt good. That did Honestly? feel good. That felt good. He was he was clocking in. Wow. Really? That's not my topic. Oh. Well, I was just trying to be a fit. Of you. Do you want to? <laughs> do you want to go with I your topic, to Eric? <laughs> Hey, don't say that. I have a joke. Okay. <laughs> oh. Mm, no. <clears throat> no. <laughs> what? Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> don't be. <laughs> what do you get when an angry sheep crosses an angry cow? What do you get when an angry sheep crosses? Mat Matterhorn. <laughs> no. Hey, that's, I'll give it to you. Yeah, that's not bad. Two animals that are in a bad mood. <laughs> oh, oh, Christ. My <laughs> oh, my God. Wah, wah. <laughs> Allie, Allie laughed. Do you, want, do you want to tell my joke that I asked, Allie, or asked uh, Eric? Oh, you should tell it. I should tell yeah. it? Yeah. No? Yeah, do it. It's, it's great. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's, like, it's, great. It's, it's great. It's great. I can tell it if you want. Go for it. Okay, so why don't dinosaurs talk? Why, Allie? Because they're dead. <laughs> She's so happy. They can't talk. 
Oh, where's the cricket noise? Yeah. 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 We've talked about adding that one for a while. Oh yeah, we have talked about yeah. adding that one. I yeah. thought you did for a while. No, I've, I haven't done that yet. I just there's only like nine spots. Wow, what a bitch! Him, so it sucks. No, there's actually more than nine spots, but whatever. Anyway. Wow, um, what a, what a bitch! What? I wanted him to push the bitch button. Oh God! Oh, there um, you go again two, with your elastic two arms. Two pages away. This bitch. Wait, wait, just everybody, everybody, well, everybody just hold on. I I have I have a a customer state story. <laughs> hey, hey Eric, before that, what's green and has wheels? A green car. What? Grass. I lied about the wheels. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I knew Mike would like that one. <laughs> I just saw that one. I'm like, you know what? Mike's gonna like this one. <laughs> Retard. Oh, man. Okay, customer state story. I love a non-joke joke. So this uh, is a close friend of mine. Um, Do they listen? Yes. Please uh, bear with me as I read through this because it was typed in haste, and there are a few grammatical errors <clears throat> number one what spit it out don't, don't move your mic yeah you, i'll move it all i want it adds to the suspense it just <laughs> sounds like you're coming <laughs> out <laughs> of it adds to the suspense it does. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I'm talking farther away now. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> <laughs> Who does he work for? No, it's number two. Cust All right. Customer states on October 10th, I was driving to work and my Ford vehicle started experiencing some issues and it caused it to go into reduced power mode. The wrench light came on and a message on the instrument cluster told me I needed to get my vehicle serviced immediately. Is it capitalized? It wasn't. I just emphasized Oh, okay. That. I was just curious. Um, my Ford Pass app also instructed me to do the same. I brought my vehicle to a specific dealership out in a specific area, a uh, service department. <laughs> my service advisor was Bob. Bob. With this tag number. What I'm about to tell you does not reflect very highly on your Ford service department, but I do want to want it noted that Mr. Bob did take excellent care of me as a service advisor. I also wanted to know that Mr. Phil, with whom I tried to contact a few times, never once gave me a call back. I tried calling several times, never once was I able to get a hold of him directly. I even told the staff that I would wait on hold at one time. I waited on hold for 30 minutes and Mr. Phil never picked up the phone. Your Ford service department kept my vehicle for approximately 15 days. During that time, I was in a rental car that I had to pay for while my vehicle is still under Ford bumper to bumper factory warranty. I was promised that I would be reimbursed. It has been several weeks and I have not been reimbursed. It was nearly $800 out of pocket that I was told would be covered. I received my vehicle back without it ever being repaired. Not only was it not repaired, but no one took the time to do a little quality control to even verify that it was repaired. One of the issues that I brought it in for, besides the main issue, was that none of my parking sensors work, and every time I put it in reverse, it indicates to me that the backup brake assist feature is non-operational. Another issue I was not aware of is that one of the reasons I was getting the wrench light was because there was an issue with the active grille shutters. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Mr. Bob assured me that these active grill shutters were replaced. On October 24th, the day that I picked it up from the Ford dealer service department, Mr. Bob assured me when I asked if all the repairs were resolved. He definitely explained how everything was repaired. The first thing I did when I was leaving, I walked up to the grill of my vehicle to start it remotely so I could watch the active grill shutters go through their cycle to fully shut, then fully open, so I could see that they were in fact installed and working properly. When I was doing my inspection of the active grill shutters, I immediately noted how they were never replaced like I was told. They were still the same shutters I know to have been on there previously due to a month's worth of dead bugs attached to all of them. They also had lots of dirt and mud, something you wouldn't see if they were replaced. Okay. Further in my inspection, I put the vehicle in reverse and it indicated to me that the backup brake assist was still non-operational, just the way it was when I brought it in. 
On this issue, Mr. Bob explained how all they had to do to fix the problem was reprogram it, and that they definitely had sent it to a different department to do the reprogramming, and how it was checked and working properly. At this point, I pretty much lost my trust and knew I had been lied to. This is why I didn't want to take it back to uh, Mr. Bob or your service department. I got on the freeway to go home from your dealer, and first thing I noticed was how a new issue, after your alleged reprogramming, is that my cruise control isn't working. So I proceeded down the highway, and in just a few moments, the wrench light comes back on, and the vehicle goes into reduced <laughs> power mode with a message on the instrument cluster indicating to me to get my service vehicle as soon as possible. Immediately. Again. The following day, I called Mr. Bob to inform him of the work that he had that hadn't been resolved. He said, just bring it back and we'll get it taken care of. I gracefully replied, okay, I work 90 miles away from your dealer and I work six to seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day with my only day off, if I get a day off, being Sunday. You can clearly see the inconvenience and frustration of just bringing it back. I literally don't have enough time in the day and your hours of operation don't allow that. Fast forward to today, November 16th, I was experiencing more issues to do with the fact that your service department didn't do the repairs they said they did. I was forced to take my Ford vehicle to another Ford dealership in another city. I showed them the paperwork on the repair order that was allegedly done by your dealer. They confirmed that the sensor you said you replaced was not replaced, as evident by the original factory installed sensor still in place, completely undisturbed. They also verified that the active grill shutters, which I already knew weren't replaced, were in fact the original factory installed active grill shutters, which are loose and still in need of being replaced. The fact that I have to write this much description to get my point across is completely disgusting on your part. If this was done to me, I'm sure it has done to other, ooh, done to several other Ford customers, and I am not happy. In fact, I'm also writing <clears throat> to Ford Corporate to let them know how this was done and how you wasted 15 days of rental car that they have to pay for while you guys are literally doing nothing. Well, jeez. <clears throat> Damn, sincerely angry Yelper. Well, I mean, where and where did you find this? I just he didn't hear any of the beginning of the conversation. No, I, I was a, paying attention so hard to the to the first part of it. It's, or a, to the, it's a friend. friend. Oh my and god. And listener. Thank yes, you for a listening. Friend listener. And listener. He Lo sent that to me specifically with the title Customer States. Local Ford dealer? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. Lo local to him though, or whatever. Well, sure. Yeah, but that's not where he okay. it's from that's where the he part works. that I missed. It's that's nowhere near that here. I missed. It's okay. nowhere near here. Gotcha. Man, that is horrible. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just a you know, a, a bad way to treat a customer, not to mention a way to represent a franchise, you know. It's what is why what happened there? Like why would you spend or I, apparently they didn't spend any time at all there, there were multiple what, multiple problems like you could have had somebody freaking look at it or say you know what the shop is too booked up we we can't look at it something i mean why what the grill shutters have to do with the maintenance light coming on everything really yes oh everything they're very important oh okay mm. it lets air in. It allows the vehicle to the engine to warm up faster, so that uh, the emissions out of the tailpipe are within. Uh, by nice. by maintenance so, light, I'm yeah. assuming you mean check engine light. Oh, is like that, that what he means by maintenance light? Is check engine light? No, no, it wasn't. There's a it warning. Was, there that's was a like warning message on the dash. Mm. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> anyways, we digress. Okay. And can I say his first mistake was, I love you, I do, and wa worship the ground you walk onto the ends of the earth and back. But you bought the first production year of a vehicle. Oh, oh. that's a technical foul. You yes. never do that. That's a technical foul. That's too far away. <laughs> I've, I've told him a couple times to uh, go through the buyback but process. people get because excited. Because his vehicle has been oh, yeah. in the shop more than it has been with him, unfortunately. So He'll get it bought, bought back. I know, but he needs bought. to start the process. Everybody well, chime in. Tell him to start the goddamn hey. process. Start the buyback start process. The buyback process. It's a lemon. You, so so you, <laughs> you as a consumer... When you call that 1-800 number, you as a consumer have more power than we do at the dealership level. And when you, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the most, or, you know, the squeakiest gets the wheel gets grease. the grease. The greasiest and wheel gets so, less squeaky? <laughs> <laughs> That's this, also true. The squeakiest so wheel gets stupid. the worm. Yes. Oh, oh, wow. But, you know, the consumer has more <laughs> power, you know, with, with the, uh, with, with the <clears throat> um, manufacturer 
than the actual individual franchise does. We are bound by the warranty and policy procedures. When the customer starts complaining and calls that 1-800 number, that opens up more avenues of repairs for us because now Ford or whatever the manufacturer is gets involved with that. Pierre. So it's, you know, we, we, we tell customers that all the time. Listen, we've done everything that we can. Call Ford, get a case opened up. Then we can have you know more power and we can talk to somebody, but we can't we can't start that process for you. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, to touch back on last week's subject, Tommy does in fact ha- he has in fact for most of his life been called Tommy Pickles. Really? Oh, or just pic- oh, or just Pickles. Really nice. So I have uh, started calling him affectionately Tommy Pickles at work. Mister Pickles. Tommy Pickles. Mister Pickles. Um, TP. The yeah. TP. That's rude. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. T- I'm like, wait, it is? I'm like, oh, toilet uh, paper. The light, right. Yeah, the light went on. Shit tickets. Like, I was, oh, my God. I love it. I have never heard that before. So really? Yeah, the, shit like, tickets. <laughs> yeah, I you heard that for the first time. I heard that for the first time during the whole COVID your, uh, toilet paper shortage. Your, Jake's mom called them shit tickets. For your turd cutter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Your poop shoot. I don't want to talk about shoots or cutters. <laughs> turd cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Sell the bell. No. Thank you, Mike. Single Thank bed. you, buddy. <laughs> oh, is this no. time already? He's, no, he's pre-coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, um, I'm, I'll save one of the subjects for next time, but uh, how about the the GT update? Yeah, you choose. Okay, so... You're um, missing parts. Yeah, to say the least. Mm-hmm. How many? Did you get the tires? Like all of them. <laughs> the twires. So... He's actually kind of tired about the whole thing. Uh, no. <laughs> if you don't get it, if I don't get it, you don't get it. Boo! Shut it down. So so we were originally told, because I needed a front wheel and a rear wheel. We were originally told that those wheels were on back order until January. Mm-hmm. They showed up like the next week. Oh. And the tires were already there waiting for them. Oh, cool. Okay. So It's take- amazing when you're a powerful person, the shit you could accomplish. <laughs> yes, thank you. What do you need? Right. <laughs> um, so uh, take it down to the uh, alignment shop because our brand new fancy alignment rack, no matter how many pieces of wood we put on it and underneath it, over it, <laughs> uh, will not. That GT will not fit on there. It's very. It's a very high alignment rack. So we were kind of screwed. So I made some phone calls and called in a couple favors and um, found an alignment shop local in town that um, actually has a, our like almost in ground uh, alignment rack. So we put the car on the alignment rack and, you know, the toe is way off. And as I'm driving the car, you know, to the alignment shop, like the steering wheel, I'm, I'm holding the steering wheel to the left because it wants to pull right. I like something, something's off in the front end, I'm sure. And I look underneath the car, nothing's bent, but whatever, blah, blah, blah. So we go to go, you know, put targets on, do the rolling compensation, all that kind of stuff. And it, by the way, it took um, very l- uh, a very few blocks of wood to get it onto this alignment rack. So, okay. <laughs> so um, we find out that the right rear. Yes, yeah, so you mentioned last week that yeah, it was bent to shit. Needs a tow link. Well, we ordered the tow link. They couldn't give me a shipping estimate on it because it comes through some you know separate thing. Then I go in uh, earlier this week. <laughs> then I go in earlier this week. To Did say, Allie like, leave? like, hey, where? Wow. <laughs> so, so the, <laughs> I go into parts earlier this week to ask where, where is this tow link? And they're like, oh, the parts on back order. I said, what do you mean this part is on back order? It, it's not currently in production anymore. Right. That it's on back order would mean that they don't have the production <laughs> supply. They're not producing this part anymore. It's sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Like, what do you mean it's on? Well, you know, I'm like. You have to get me a better answer. Yeah, I was than gonna it's say gotta do better than that. So they're like, "Oh, well, we'll make a Copus ticket on it." I'm like, "Okay." What's that so, mean? So uh, Copus is like the 
Um, it's the way that the parts department deals with the people that allocate the parts to see what the actual story is when, you know, like, like you're, it, it's a way to communicate with the corporate parts department, I guess, or Ford corporate parts department versus just looking something up in your computer. Like DAG. Okay. Yeah. Like DAG. And then, like the dealer assistant group. DAG yes. Got it. Yes, 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 yes. DAG it. DAG nab it. So, so their response back is, oh, uh, there's a supply shortage and there's no off back order Surprise. date. W- no, there's no supply shortage. Other dealers show them, but the one hand isn't talking to the other. So lo and behold, I reached out to um, our lovely friends on the Ford uh, forums, uh, Ford forums on the Facebook uh, group, forums. Ford Technicians Forum, forums. and I got a number for um, a very special person that apparently collects uh, Ford GT parts. Hmm. So Do uh, like for funsies, well, running a business. OK, yeah, racing business because, you know, Fords, but <laughs> We're still waiting to hear back what they say because there are parts in warehouses that are shown, but yet they say that they're on back order. Mm-hmm. So we, we believe because when you order the parts for the specialty car, you have to talk to like some specific concierge service is the way that, that, that it's described. And the concierge <coughs> service, they don't know anything. They're just like number writer downers. And, you know, when they, when they look up the part number or whatever and it says there's none available, they, they don't give you an answer. So that was the whole issue of dealing and escalating to the copus side of it but no matter what if this thing is not available or if it's not you know going to be here in a reasonable amount of time i am going to contact this man and company and get the correct part that i need for this car because i need this really expensive car out of my dealership right now it's blocking up a stall because i can't park it out in the lot Mm -hmm. and i need this you know liability gone so i'm i I cannot wait to get that out of there it's uh, I love looking at it every day. It's a lot of fun to drive, but my goodness, I just want it gone. Just want it gone. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Well, that was fun. That was fun, but it's that. Wait. I you can... know what next week is? Thanksgiving? Yeah, we're not going to get to hear from anybody so you guys i hope everyone gets to spend a lot of wonderful time with their families or if you don't like your family fuck those guys um enjoy your turkey or whatever it enjoy is you it eat. hopefully you guys get a couple do you Ass. guys get a couple days off no <laughs> are you high uh, we do we get thanksgiving don't be so fucking dramatic it wasn't that funny do you the answer is no we don't get a day you don't get thanksgiving off uh i think the day of that's it but you don't get friday off no Oh, that's we nice. get Friday off too. We get a four day weekend. Mm-hmm. Must be nice. That's the one time. It's the, like one little bone that they no throw wonder your dealership is failing. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> hey, it's been failing for like 30 years. Care- so careful. we're doing <laughs> that's great. A, that's, a, that's a good. You know, <laughs> careful, you might put him in a bad. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Don't be such a busty crustacean. Uh, well, better that than being a crusty bustation, Ali. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much to all of our Your sponsors. Vagina. <laughs> that was my husband that just No, said no, that. no, it wasn't good. <laughs> that was just I'm sorry. We could stop. That was bad timing. I swear it wasn't for that. Okay. Perfect timing. I'm at least, sorry, babe, I love you. At least some it's a wonderful still vagina. Love loves you and your crusty butt station. <laughs> some people still love me, like Travis Ferris from Hit Distributing, and supplying Nick Justice Brothers, Brothers from Matco Tools, supplying us with Matco Tools and Raymond, products. El Ranchito Taco Shop Penny and guac. his poisonous guac. <laughs> Only to me. You should try it. It's great. Mm. Norman Glacier. Do not try this guac if you're allergic to guac. Yes. Norman Glacier, Stovacore Metalworks. Metal. Works. Metal works. Bruce Vane, Sweet Tunes, Deedle Deedle. Dale oh, Follett from TwistedBuilds.com. Our, our Vippies. Hey, you guys, we're actually doing stuff on the TikToks lately. We uploaded two new videos and we have like more than 10 likes. Oh my God, it's amazing. That is pretty amazing. So um, actually the one with the car show did really good. And also do not forget to visit us. TikTok at- Customer States Podcast customerstatespodcast.com 
You can email us at customersatepodcast at gmail.com, which just also happens to be our PayPal. Listen to our new commercial. It's funny. It's good. They already did. Buy our merch. Well, we hope they did. Can you buy some merch? I, I We made it specially for you. I think it's time to make like a banana and split. And with that, we say... <laughs> you want to go fishing? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! Crusty bus station. Love you. Love you. <laughs> oh my god. What? It was a turkey. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. You. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kevin! <laughs> Love you. Love you. You're doing it on purpose. <laughs> Oh, turkey, come over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love you. And cut. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> so good. You know what? You're not on my side anymore. You have the power to hit the button after I say it, and you don't do it. You know what? No, I, I can, no. I, I think I she's just bullshit. bitter about her crusty bus. I, I can cut this. <laughs> Allie, I can cut this whenever I want. Oh, that's I, Hi, this is Mike Sarah from Customer States. Matco Tools is one of the best tool companies in the industry, and Nick Lowridge is one of the best Matco tool distributors. Nick can get me anything I need for the shop or for at home. From oil drain pans to beef jerky, <laughs> Nick's got what I need on tap. Nick works in the Thousand Oaks, California area, and you too can get whatever you need by calling him at 805-796-7323. And if you're not in that area, call him anyway and tell him you heard about him from the Customer States podcast. And then you can hop on to uh, matcotools.com and find a Matco Tools distributor near you. Matco Tools. Service. Trust. Results.